Alright, in today's episode we're going to be covering the proper display calibration. Now from what I'm going to be covering today, that will work if you're either photographer, colorist, video editor, or simply if you just want to play video games as they were designed to be played. Basically the correct colors. And in this video I'm going to walk you through the whole entire process, how to correctly calibrate your display and basically all the settings that require for the calibration. Now if you haven't watched my previous videos, I'm going to post link in the description below about the proper monitors. Basically I'm suggesting the correct monitors you should have in order to completely benefit from the color calibration process. Old displays usually cannot represent colors correctly if you're looking under certain angle. Now if you have an IPS panel you don't have that problem. Basically it's like a cell phone. No matter how you rotate you're still gonna be seeing accurate colors. Now that being said make sure before you're gonna go and purchase the calibrator you have a sufficient enough or let me say moderate enough display otherwise you're just simply gonna waste your money and not gonna get any good results. Before starting to calibrate your display let your screen to warm up for about 20 to 30 minutes. I usually do it for about 45 minutes to make sure the display is completely warmed up and all the colors it's showing are represented to the maximum performance. I'm not going to be going through the whole installation process as I think it's pretty straightforward. However, make sure your display calibrator is relatively new because all display calibrators no longer support the modern features and relatively old so they're not really working that well with the modern screen. Now for my video today I'm going to be using i1 Display Pro and basically in my personal experience I think this particular calibrator is the best bang for the buck. This calibrator will get you very accurate results and it's relatively cheap comparing to professional calibrators that can cost a couple thousand dollars. So in my opinion this is the best calibrator as of right now on the market that you can purchase within the reasonable amount of money. So let's jump into the windows really quick and I'm going to walk you through the entire process. Before we're going to start make sure to select your display that you're choosing whether it's going to be your primary display or secondary display and on the right hand side make sure you're going to choose the calibrator that you're using. Before I used to use the spider calibrators and I have to admit they're relatively very accurate. However, this particular calibrator is much faster than the spiders and it gives a little bit more accurate colors. You can still use spiders but if you're using the old school especially spider 4 it takes forever to calibrate display. In some cases you may wait 3 to 4 hours for the entire process to complete. So let's go to the next panel. In the next panel we have a few different features we can manually select. Now I like to be in a completely dark environment when I color grade but not pitch black. So my screen uh, brightness I usually set to about 120. However typically between 90 to 120 is relatively a good number no matter where you are. So I think it's a very decent average number to select. So 120 always been working for me. So again that's up to you. All those settings relatively depend exactly what you're doing whether you're a filmmaker or a photographer. Some of those settings are a little bit different. Okay and for the test chart I usually leave it as default because it's been doing a very good job. As far as the test chart I always been leaving the default number. So it's been doing a really good job. However if you want to make sure that you get completely accurate result you may change the test chart or increase the number of patterns it will do. Typically larger the number the more accurate calibration is going to be. Okay click on the calibration and you're gonna see a new window showed up and basically if you watch my previous video this is where the monitor parameters of RGB comes to play. Basically before we're going to jump and start calibrating we should dial the most neutral possible results for the calibration prior to the process. Basically once this thing is green you can go ahead stop that test chart and proceed with a proper calibration. Alright hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. Thank you for watching make sure to subscribe and I will see you soon.